What is going on, Headliner Nation? Jake Fantasy Headliners. Hopefully everybody's doing well out there today. I'm looking forward to today's episode, right? I, I had to do some research. I had to go into the history books on this one to make sure I pulled forward some pertinent information when we're talking about rookie breakouts for 2021 fantasy football at the running back position. Before we get into that list, a couple housekeeping items. First thing, I owe you a draft guide, right? I made a goal in a video last week that said, hey, if you got over 800 likes, I'd give away a draft guide. You guys blew it away. Uh, so Isaiah Penzik is going to be the winner of a randomly chosen draft guide here for 2021. Congratulations, Isaiah. Uh, what about uh, uh, what about uh, our draft guide, right? Our draft guide scheduled to release right around the corner. July 1st is the scheduled drop date. If you haven't bought yours yet, now is the time to get it to absolutely have a chance to dominate 2021 fantasy football over 600 virtual pages of all things that you could possibly need. But before we get into this name, I said at the beginning, right, I feel like I put a lot of work into this one. I had to do a lot of research. My brain hurts and I don't have room to be scratching my head because my hair just falls out even more. But uh, I think if I'm going to put forward this much work in a show, I should do another giveaway. And I can't do it every show because I'd be broke in a matter of weeks. But you know what? I can do it on this one. So what do I have to give away in a show this week? How about an autographed mini helmet of Cam Akers of the Los Angeles Rams? If we can get 1,500 likes on this video, I'm up in the ante here, 1,500 likes, I will give away that autographed helmet there to a random comment in the comment section. So leave those comments down below and hit that like button because now is the time that we head into some potential rookie breakouts at the running back position. Let's see who we're taking a look at this, this week. And here's the list, right? As of right now, the consensus rankings have these five running backs as the five highest rated rookies as of right now in 2021. We got Najee Harris. You know, that's not a surprise there. Running back 13, Travis Etienne at running back 22. Javante Williams running back 28. Trey Sermon at running back 32. And Michael Carter rounding out at running back 33. And we're going to start off with Najee Harris because he may have the, the biggest uphill battle to be considered a breakout, right? Well, Why? He's rated the highest already. His expectations are already through the roof for him to outproduce expectations. He's got to finish what? Top eight, top 10? It's a tall order for any rookie. So as of right now, he's currently running back 13 overall. And I did some research. I looked back at history and I found out that over the last five years, on average, the running back 13 overall in half PPR scoring scores right around 192 points per year. The last five years, we see Latavius Murray, followed by Devontae Freeman, Tariq Cohen, Joe Mixon, and Melvin Gordon. So 192 points. We're going to kind of earmark that as, all right, that's kind of where Najee needs to be as a baseline. Can he outproduce that? And that's where we need to bring up to figure out what is that. Okay, so 192 points. What does he really need to get in, in terms of football uh, statistics and fantasy points to hit that number? Well, he needs to reach right around 1,100 yards rushing, six touchdowns, 25 receptions, 225 receiving yards, and two touchdowns. That comes out to be 193 points. So look at those numbers. Do those numbers look realistic? And honestly, the only one to me that is somewhat questionable has to be the rushing yards, right? 1,100 rushing yards. So let's take a look at how many attempts would that really take for him to get to see if that's a realistic number as a rookie. So I took it and I divided it by four and a half yards per carry. I was a little light. I would not be surprised if this guy averaged closer to five yards a carry, but the offensive line isn't great in Pittsburgh. So I knocked it down a little bit to be a little bit more realistic. So at four and a half yards per carry, Najee would need 245 attempts on the ground. Sounds like a lot, right? Well, with the added game this year, 245 attempts divided by the 17-game season comes out to only being 14 and a half attempts a game. I would think that all of us out there could say, hey, I expect him to get more than 14 and a half rush attempts a game. And then when you look at the, the receiving stats, in my opinion, those are on the light side. I wouldn't be surprised if he's closer to that 35 to 40 reception range, somewhere in the three to 400 yards receiving, because he's very capable of receiving out of the backfield here. So if you're asking me, do I believe that Najee Harris has that opportunity to outperform his current ranking, his current ADP? Honestly, I kind of think that he does. If this kid stays healthy, he should finish inside the top 10. He's efficient. The only issue that he's going to have to worry about is the offensive line and how much do they really run the ball. 
I have a feeling they're going to have to run the ball even more because we saw Big Ben wear down down the stretch last year. If this team wants to compete in that division, they need to throw it a little bit less and have a solid running game. We've seen that in the past with the Pittsburgh Steelers. And honestly, there's nobody that's really going to take carries away from this guy. Sure, he'll be spelled at times and we'll see other guys in that backfield, but he's going to be the man in Pittsburgh. And honestly, I think Najee Harris can do it. So let's go ahead and put ourselves a little green check mark here next to Najee because I, th I think he could do it. What about Travis Etienne? Now, right now, Travis Etienne is currently sitting at running back 22. So, same drill, right? Over the last five years, on average, running back 22 has finished right around 160 fantasy points per year. 2016 was Jeremy Hill, followed by Jarek McKinnon, Lamar Miller, James White, and then just last year, most recently, CEH Clyde Edwards-Alaire. So, 160 points is what we're kind of looking like here for Travis Etienne. What would he need to get in order to get those 160 points? Well, being that he's a little bit more involved in the passing game than he is the rushing game, I had to bump him up on the, on the, the receiving side of things to kind of compensate for that. So I have only 500 yards rushing and three rushing touchdowns, 50 receptions for 500 yards and three touchdowns through the air, 1,000 total yards and six total touchdowns, gives him 161 total fantasy points and puts him in the ballpark there of finishing right at running back 22. Now, those are pretty solid stats, right? 1,000 total yards and six touchdowns. Do I see him getting more than that? That's the biggest problem. Can he get 100 carries in this backfield? We already know James Robinson is still there. They brought in Carlos Hyde, who played for Urban Meyer at Ohio State. That's the reason they brought him in. James Robinson was a huge surprise for people in Jacksonville last year. Do they just totally write him off for Travis Etienne? Does Etienne spend more time outside in the slot than he does in the backfield? There's a lot of question marks here. And honestly, I'm not convinced that he can get more touches in this offense. If he finishes with 1,000 total yards and six uh, touchdowns, I think it's a successful year. But it's pegged like right where he needs to be. He's really not overproducing what people are expecting. So as far as a, a first-year rookie year breakout for Travis Etienne, I, I got to be honest, I think he finishes right there in that top 24 range, but he's ranked inside of it to come into the season. So I got to put that, that red X next to Travis Etienne here for this year. Love the talent. Just don't know about the year one opportunity with all the question marks. What about Javante Williams of the Denver Broncos? Now, these next few should go a little bit quicker, right? Because they're all outside the top 24. We want them to finish inside the top 24, finish as a running back two in fantasy football. So we can kind of compare all these guys with the same historical numbers, right? The running back 24 over the last five years, on average, scores right around 148 points per year. 2016 was Jonathan Stewart, followed by Latavius Murray, Austin Eckler, Raheem Mostert, and then J.D. McKissick just last year. As of right now, Javante Williams is sitting at running back 28. But in order for him to reach that 148 points, he needs to be somewhere in the vicinity of 700 rush yards, six rushing touchdowns, 24 receptions for 250 receiving yards, and one touchdown through the air. So that will come out to exactly 149 fantasy points. Can Javante Williams reach those numbers? Well, we know that Philip Lindsay is no longer in town, and he left behind close to 200 touches a season. Melvin Gordon himself, the lead running back in Denver as of right now, hasn't played a full season since 2017, and we know this is a team that is going to rely on the run year in and year out. They went out and they took Javante Williams for a reason, right? I kind of compared this guy to a version of Nick Chubb, same style of running back. He can play all three downs. He can run between the tackles. He'll be good on the goal line. This is definitely the running back of the future for the Denver Broncos. If they can get their situation settled at the quarterback position and really move the ball through the air with Cortland Sutton and Jerry Judy and K.J. Hamler and Noah Fant, that's going to open up the, the holes in the running game, right? Javante Williams, as the season progresses, should get more and more touches in this offense. And honestly, I can see him outproducing some of these numbers. I wouldn't be surprised if we see a little bit more there in the passing game, maybe slightly more uh, on the rushing side of, of the football. So this is definitely a guy who, in my opinion, can definitely outproduce that RB28 that he's being drafted at, finish inside the top 24, and potentially be a rookie breakout so he gets himself the green check mark here this week. What about the next guy, Trey Sermon? A lot can be said the same here for Trey Sermon, right? We're going to compare him with the same numbers historically, but he's currently at running back 32 
overall. Can he reach 148 points this year? He's going to need similar numbers to what we saw from Javante Williams, right? 700 rushing yards, 250 yards receiving, seven total touchdowns, right around 24 receptions. Can he get that? Well, honestly, I don't have that warm fuzzy here in San Francisco because it's inconsistent roles in the backfield of San Francisco. We know Raheem Mostert will be in the mix. Wayne Gallman is there now. Jeff Wilson Jr. is going to come back from injury. And at some point, all these guys are going to get touches in this backfield. We've seen it year in and year out with Kyle Shanahan in San Francisco. They're going to ride the hot hand. They're not going to commit to anybody. Trey Sermon, I believe, will have some big games this year. I will not be surprised if he has multiple games with multiple touchdowns. The problem is... I don't see it being consistent week in and week out to where he gets enough consistent volume to hit these numbers. He's got to get almost 1,000 total yards, and I just don't see it here year one. Maybe in the future, as they thin out that backfield a little bit and really commit to him, then we could then we could look at it, right? Maybe next year when Mostert and Jeff Wilson Jr. are gone, then we can look at Trey Sermon a little bit more and say, hey, this guy could possibly break out year two. But for now, with the way they run things in San Francisco... Can't do it. He gets the red X. So now we will finish it off with Michael Carter of the Jets. And Michael Carter's just behind Trey Sermon, right? He's currently ranked running back 33 overall. Can he get to the magical 148 points needed? I mean, we're looking for the same type of stats, right? But does he going to have that type of opportunity? Honestly, I kind of think that he does, right? I mean, it's an improved offense overall. In New York, right? Zach Wilson there at quarterback, the future franchise quarterback. They brought in Corey Davis. Does Denzel Mims take a step forward? We know that uh, Jamison Crowder is back on a discounted deal out of the slot. We know that they have, you know, stud rookie wide receiver Elijah Moore. And there's really just a lack of talent in front of him on the depth chart, right? Are we really worried about Tevin Coleman or LaMichael P. Ryan? Honestly, I'm just not. Michael Carter is a superior talent compared to those guys. He can play all three downs. He can catch the ball out of the backfield. And this is an offense that's going to have to put some points on the board. And they're going to be more excited. I believe Michael Carter may be one of the better values in this draft as far as rookie running backs go. I 100% uh, believe that he could outproduce these numbers and be a great value for you. So you know what? He's getting the green check mark here. But I got to reiterate, right? The purpose of this video is not for me to say that this guy sucks or this guy's better or this one should be ranked higher or this one's a must have or this one's a must avoid. That's not the purpose of this video. We're trying to have you guys look at things a little bit differently, right? When you can really break down players to this type of level, you can go into your fantasy football drafts and make super educated decisions on what works best for your team. Roster construction and league rules play a big part into this. Do you have, how many bench spots do you have? Can you hold on to extra guys? Because then maybe all of a sudden, guys like a Trey Sermon make more sense because you can just stash them on your bench. Maybe you have a really thin bench, only a few spots, and you can't afford to wait on somebody like a Trey Sermon. That's where a lot of people have to make these decisions, and that's why we do videos like this, so you actually get to see it in that type of way. But I want to know what you think. Which one of these guys are you really targeting during your fantasy football draft? Leave that comment down below. Because by leaving that comment down below, you'll enter yourself in the free giveaway for the Cam Akers Autograph Mini Helmet as long as we hit 1,500 likes on this video. I'm looking forward to giving that away, and I'm looking forward to having a conversation with you guys down below in the comment section. If you haven't gotten your draft guide yet for 2021 Fantasy Football, it's available for pre-order on our website right now, thefantasyheadliners.com, scheduled to drop July 1st, right around the corner, and it's over 600 virtual pages It'll help you dominate fantasy football here in 2021. So hopefully you guys have a great rest of your day, a great week, and we'll talk to you later.